Hello everyone, Sir Weds here and today we will be discussing 10 of the most frequently asked questions regarding the School Form 10, also known as the Learner's Permanent Record. With the release of DEPED Order No. 58 Series of 2017, a number of our implementing public schools still have some questions regarding the processes of implementing this policy, especially with the School Form 10 or the New Learner's Permanent Academic Record. And here are 10 of the most frequently asked questions from the field and their answers. Number 1. Which grade level will use the SF-10? The School Form 10 started its implementation last school year 2017-2018 to all grades 1 and 7 learners in the elementary and junior high school levels. The senior high school will also adapt the senior high school SF-10 which does not generally differ with the first version except for the title of the document. Grades 1 and 7 last school year are grades 2 and 8 as of school year 2018-2019. Thus, they will continue to use the new SF-10. The implementation will continue in the succeeding years until the old Form 137 will be completely replaced come school year 2021-2022. Number 2. Can other grade levels between grades 3 to 6 and 9 to 10 adopt the SF-10 already even though they are not yet implemented on the school year? As of school year 2018-2019, grades 3 to 6 and 9 to 10 will continue to use the Form 137 and must not change it to SF-10. The logic behind is that, by doing so, the teachers in charge will be directed to transfer all information from the Form 137 to the SF-10, which will in turn add more work to our teaching force. It definitely defeats the purpose why we modify the old forms, which is to alleviate as many clerical tasks as we can in the field. Number 3. Who will prepare the SF-10? Class advisors are to prepare only one copy of the SF-10, specifically grades 1 and 7. Attaching all relevant documents that will identify the learner and their academic performance during kindergarten such as a copy of the birth certificate, kindergarten completion certificate or ECCD checklist, progress report, or other equivalent documents. The SF-10 will then be forwarded to the advisor come next school year and will use the same SF-10 in updating the learner's academic performance. Number 4. What academic procedures are to be followed in case the learner transfers to another school? This depends as to when the learner transferred to another school. The first case, if the learner transferred to another school come next school year or transferred out, the originating school shall create one certified true copy of the learner's SF-10 and send the original SF-10 and other pertinent documents to the receiving school without marking NA or not applicable to any succeeding boxes within the SF-10 since the receiving school will continue to fill in the original SF-10 for the learner's academic performance in the future. The originating school will keep the certified true copy within the records of SF-10 archives. Note that the originating school must mark the certificate of transfer box in the SF-10 found on page 2 along with the school seal. The second case is if the learner transferred to another school on the same school year or moved out, the originating school will still make a certified true copy of the SF-10 and keep it in the school's archive and send the original SF-10 to the receiving school. On the SF-10 grade level of this particular learner, the advisor will fill in all grades of the learner until the specific quarter or grading period he she attended. On the remarks section of this grade level, the advisor will note the date of the learner's transfer of records along with the school name and school ID of the receiving school, so as to have information that the learner has moved out and is currently enrolled in this new school requesting for the SF-10. The receiving school of the original SF-10 will copy the grades of this learner in the next empty grade level box and continue to fill in for the remaining quarters to compute the learner's final graded average by the end of the school year. The third case would be if the learner, by school year 2021-2022, finished elementary school already and is moving up to grade 7, the elementary school where the learner finished grade 6 will keep the original SF-10. 
and create a certified true copy of the SF10 and send it to the junior high school where the learner will enroll come next school year. The purpose of keeping the original SF10 in the elementary school is so that if the learner should request a copy of his or her SF10 for employment or going abroad, the elementary school can create a certified true copy of the SF10 without any legal issues. The same processes will be followed for those who will move up from junior high school to senior high school. Number 5. Is there a specific schedule or quarter grading period in preparing the SF10? Yes, the SF10 must be prepared by the end of the school year or when the need arises only. This is to avoid erasures or alterations on the document by the end of the school year when it is prepared quarterly following the old practice for the Form 137. This also elevates the number of frequencies in updating the SF10 instead of a quarterly task, it is now only prepared once a year. Number 6. How about the quarterly checking of school-related forms practice, especially for those who are still using the Form 137? The scope of DEPED Order Number 58, Series of 2017, is only applicable for the new school forms, specifically SF8 to SF10, including the School Form 5 for Kindergarten, ALS forms, and Senior High School school forms. Whatever existing practice of the Form 137 checking is not covered by this DEPED Order. However, as per DEPED Order Number 11, Series of 2018, Policy Guidelines on the Checking of School-Related Forms, it is mentioned there that the establishment of the School Checking Committee and Division Checking Committee must adhere to the procedure and timelines of checking school forms. Within the said DEPED Order, the schedule of checking must be during the last quarter of the school year. As such, it is encouraged to all grade levels not using the SF10 yet to follow the same timeline in preparing the Form 137. Number 7. Is there a recommended paper quality, paper size, color of the ink in preparing the SF10? The Department of Education abhors cosmetic issues in the preparation of the SF10. This only adds burden to our schools and teachers in the field. The use of an ordinary long band paper 8.5 inches by 13 inches is enough as it is for the SF10 and can be printed in a black and white format. No school and or division logos should be seen in the SF10 aside from the DepEd logo. Commercial printing from private establishments or institutions of the new school forms, not only of the SF10, are highly discouraged since it is considered as inappropriate use of the school's MOOE. Number 8. If the learner moved out of school, should the concerned school wait for a request letter from the receiving school for the SF10? Not necessarily. As per DEPET Order Number 54, Series of 2016, if the learner transferred or moved out to another school, and that learner will be enrolled in the LIS of this new school, the LIS will notify the originating school that the learner is already enrolled in another school. This LIS system notification is already considered as a request of document transfer from the receiving school. As such, the originating school must send the SF10 to them. Number 9. If the learner constantly transfers to a new school such that the grade level boxes in the SF10 has been filled out, where will the succeeding school or grade levels write the next academic performance of that learner? In such case, mostly for students who are affected with armed conflicts or conflicts with the law, the school may add a new blank sheet of page 2 in the SF10 and continue to fill in the learner's performance. And number 10. Is the SF10 printed back-to-back -back or in multiple sheets? Schools are encouraged to print the SF10 in multiple sheets instead of back-to-back -back unlike the Form 137. The reason behind is that if the learner should transfer or move to another school, the school seal in page 2 will not distort any part of page 1 of the SF10, especially in cases where the learner transfers to different schools on a given period. Multiple school seals will be marked in page 2. Also, teachers sometimes use dark ink ball pen or signed pens, which sometimes leaves a mark on the back page of the sheet, and this can be avoided when the SF10 is printed in multiple sheets. So that's it. These are 10 most frequently asked questions regarding the new school form 10. 
also known as the Learner's Permanent Academic Record. All the answers we provided here are based on DepEd Order Number 54, Series of 2016, DepEd Order Number 58, Series of 2017, and DepEd Order Number 11, Series of 2018. If you have any questions that were not mentioned here in our video, please feel free to comment it down below and we'll try to address them as soon as we can. Also, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Like and share our videos for more updates in the future. If you want to check out some of our automated school forms and other Excel-based templates, please visit our website at https colon slash slash ischoolforms.000webhostapp.com. I also created a keynote and PowerPoint presentation of this video which is also available at our website, a link of which is available down below. Again, this is Sir Weds of the Integrated School Forms and thank you for watching.